Yeah, good, good morning, everyone. Thanks to Dr. Rajiv Sinha and team for organizing such a wonderful conference. My sincere apologies for not being available in person. Mm -hmm. So for the next 20 minutes, we'll have a short discussion on ectopic kidneys. So we all know that renal fusion anomalies are the common uh, congenital anomalies of kidney and urinary tract. And uh, fusion anomalies occur due to disruption of the normal embryological migration of the kidneys. And it can be associated with other uh, abnormalities like rotation anomalies and uh, abnormality in the vascular supply as well. And it can be associated with other congenital anomalies involving the other systems like cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal tract, and the skeletal system. So, like uh, classifying CACPUT, it is basically an embryonic defect which can be sporadic or it can be due to environmental causes or it can be due to genetic abnormalities. So, when we classify them, it is based on the number, size and position. And in number, you can have agenesis of the kidneys or you can have supernumerary kidneys or you can have hypoplasia in case of a size abnormality. And in position, we have the ectopic kidneys, horseshoe kidneys and malrotations. So in our talk, we are going to concentrate more on the position of the kidneys and more so on ectopic kidneys. So if you look at this picture, So if you look at this picture, at fifth week of uh, gestational age and sixth week, seventh week and eighth week and ninth week. So as gestational advances, we all know that the lumbosacral uh, growth causes the kidneys to actually uh, ascend to their final position and reaches uh, around sixth to ninth week of gestational age. And the kidney gets a vascular supply from the dorsal iota's neighboring branches and the accessory renal arteries. So in the sixth week, if you look, the kidneys is actually placed much lower down. And towards the seventh week, it keeps ascending and it reaches a normal position around nine week of gestational age. So there are a lot of theories behind fusion anomalies. We are not going to dwell so much of time on this. You have the arterial folk theory. You have the abnormal caudal deflection and rotation theory. You have the theory of abnormal urethral development theory of abnormal metanephric migration. And uh, this ectopic kidneys is more in a uh, place of theory of abnormal metanephric migration, where you have abnormal migration of the metanephric cells across a primitive streak, resulting in fusion anomalies. And there are also few genetic causes which can cause fusion anomalies. So how was uh, antenatal ultrasound very much helpful in detection of caput? So we all know that fetal kidneys can be demonstrated very well as early as 9 to 12 weeks of gestational age. And antenatal ultrasound is very important to detect major uh, renal anomalies. And uh, But the limitation is so much uh, dependent on the operator and it is patient dependent as well. So ultrasound... Uh, Doing ultrasound antenatally will help us to know the presence of kidneys, the location, whether it is located in a normal position or in an ectopic uh, place, the size of the kidneys, whether the size of the kidneys is corresponding to the appropriate gestational age, and how is the ecogenicity of the kidneys, or is there any other fusion anomalies associated with these things. And uh, we also get uh, supplemental information about the urinary bladder and external genitalia as well. So this is a classification of uh, fusion anomalies. So if you look at uh, it, it is classified into renal ectopia and renal fusion anomalies. The first one is a, ring, a simple ectopia where you have one kidney lying in the normal position and the other kidney lying lower down. And next is a crossed ectopia without fusion where you have both the kidneys in the same side, but the, you don't have any fusion anomalies here. Next is a crossed fused renal ectopia where you have both the kidneys lying on the same side and the upper kidney ha gets fused with the uh, lower pole of the upper pole of the low low lying kidneys. So it is caused as crossed fused renal ectopia, and you can have crossing of the ureters as well. And in renal fusion anomalies, you have the horseshoe kidneys and the pancake kidneys.
So renal ectopia, it is basically, as already discussed, it is abnormal position of the kidneys, uh, which occurs when the kidney fails to ascend to the retroperitoneal fossa during the embryogenic development that is between as early as 6th to 9th week. So as uh, this classification tells us, this is simple renal ectopia where you have one kidney which is uh, placed in normal position and the other kidney is placed a little lower down and the crossed fused ectopia with fusion where you have both the kidneys lying on the same side with the fusion of the upper kidney lower pull and uh, upper uh, pole of the low lying kidneys. Next is cross Fast fused ectopia without fusion where you have both the kidneys lying on the same side and here you have the crossed uh, ectopic kidneys of the solitary kidney where you have only one kidney and the ureters gets uh, attached to the opposite side. Next is the bilateral crossed fused where you have both the kidneys lying on the normal position but you have crossing of the ureters. So, uh, the incidence of renal ectopia ranges between 2 to 10 per 10,000, depending upon the mode of, uh, by which we are detecting. And uh, the commonest is a simple renal ectopia. And you can have different locations of sim uh, simple renal ectopia. It can be placed either in pelvis, it can be either in the iliac region, abdomen, or even in the chest. But the commonest position is pelvic kidneys uh, for a form of the uh, simple renal ectopia. So basically, ectopic kidneys fail to rotate normally as well, resulting on the shift of renal axis so that the renal pelvis is actually directed anteriorly rather than medially. And the blood supply also can be little disrupted. The blood supply, uh, supply is usually from the iliac or the infrarenal iota and at times the hypogastric and the middle sacral arteries. So the clinical presentation basically uh, depends on the uh, presence and absence of hydroerythronephrosis. Some, many times they are asymptomatic and rarely they are symptomatic as well. So in a sonographic study done in an antenatal scan with empty renal fossa, we noted that out of 40 scans, empty renal fossa was noted in antenatal scan and 25 of which had renal ectopia, of which 24 had simple uh, renal ectopia and one had crossed ectopia and two had horseshoe kidney and renal agenesis was noted in 13 of them. And the risk of, and uh, if the child is symptomatic, the risk of uh, hydroeurotonephrosis is higher because basically of the malrotation of the kidney and the anteriorly placed renal pelvis. So like the commonest um, symptom they can present is with abdominal pain, fever, hematuria. They can also present with urinary incontinence. And they can also have associated complications like urinary tract infection. They can have obstructive features and they can also have kidney stones. So next, they can also have abdominal uh, mass. And we should also remember that ectopic kidneys are usually located in the retroperitoneal region. So they are more prone for traumatic injuries. So what are all the associated conditions in which you uh, you can have in ectopic kidneys you can commonly encounter? The first is the vesicouretric reflex. Next is a urethropelvic junction obstruction. You can have renal dysplasia as well. So VUR is a common associated condition with ectopic kidneys. It accounts for around one third of all cases and it is more so common with the simple ectopic kidneys. Next is the urethropelvic junction obstruction. It's a common finding for individuals with crossed renal ectopia. When compared to sim uh, simple non-pelvic ectopia, you can have uh, urethropelvic junction obstruction more so with crossed renal ectopia. And there are also few cases reported with renal dysplasia. So what are all the other associated anomalies you can have in genitals? So the male genital anomalies are your hypospadias, your cryptoptism, and in females, you can have Mullerian agenesis and mere rocket tonsi husher osser syndrome, where you can have agenesis of uterus and uterus and vagina. So you can also encounter unicornuate uh, uterus or bicornuate uterus or even septae in the uterus. You can also have non-genital abnormalities involving the adrenal cardiac system and the skeletal anomalies. So thoracic kidneys are often associated with uh, diaphragmatic hernias. 
So how do we evaluate a child with ectopic kidneys? So like in physical examination can detect genital anomalies uh, like hypospadias and cryptopism and non-genito urinary features associated with genetic disorders and few other syndromes. So when you do an imaging, we all should remember that uh, any child who's been detected antenatally with a uh, congenital anomaly has to be followed up postnatally as well with the ultrasound. And it is a must to do ultrasound postnatally. And so like what are all the indications for doing uh, maturating cystourethrogram in a child with ectopic kidneys? So um, MCU is not done on regular basis. It is not a routine test. And it is considered uh, only in children who develop urinary tract infection or when they have hydroerythronephrosis or hydronephrosis per se. And the DMSA scan is basically done to actually know the differential function of the kidneys and also to detect scars and also to know the function of the contralateral kidneys. And uh, dynamic uh, uh, renal scan is done only in case uh, if you are going to suspect urinary obstruction. And CT scan also plays a role, but it is more so to actually know the anatomy of the kidney and also to know the vascular supply. So this is a paper where you had, uh, uh, where they had looked into the urological and nephrological findings in uh, ectopic kidneys. They had 41 uh, uh, children. The median age was 0.2 years and they had followed up those children for 7.7 uh, years. But they uh, did not encounter albinuria nor hypertension. The only thing uh, they noted in nine children was reduced GFR that is less than 90 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square. So the basically they did not have developed much albinuria nor hypertension. So we'll just try to understand more by uh, just a simple case study. It's a nine month old boy who uh, presented to our OPD with ultrasound report, which was performed outside, which showed a non-visualized right kidney. The baby had a history of excessive crying during urination and there was also a history of passing hard stones. So the ultrasound done uh, in our center showed crossed uh, fused ectopic kidneys with a normal CMD and the ureters was normal and it was not dilated. So if you look at this imaging, this is the left kidney and this is the right kidney, both are fused. So this is an image which shows that uh, the right kidney is not in normal position. There is crossed fused right kidney with the contralateral left kidney lower down in position. So this uh, child underwent a basic renal function test which was normal and there was no history of UTI. So this child was followed up with the annual ultrasound. At the end of one year, the child had a normal sized uh, left kidney which was measuring around 8 centimeters, but it was uh, mal rotated uh, right kidney and is fused inframedially and the CMD was well maintained. So we should know that crossed fused renal ectopia is a type of uh, partial fusion kidneys, fusion ectopic kidneys, which is characterized by presence of ectopic kidneys that crosses the midline and fuses with the orthotopic uh, contralateral kidneys. Despite the ectopic renal position, the ureters of an ectopic kidney has a normal insertion in the bladder. And so the incidence is around 7.5 of uh, 10,000 newborns. And there is also a male female male ratio, males are more uh, common, which, account, which is around 3 is to 2. So among all types of cross-fused ectopia, inferior ectopia is the commonest. So a little bit uh, dwelling into the embryology, we all have already discussed the abnormal migration of ureteric uh, button and the metanephric blastemia is the theory behind and you have the abnormal position of umbilical artery which is actually influencing the cephalic migration of kidney which follows the path of uh, the least resistant and uh, migrates to the contralateral side. So like the ureteric bud crosses over because of the overbending of overbending and the rotation of the caudal end of the embryo preventing the fusion of the ureteric butt with the metanephric blastemia. So there is stimulation of the contralateral metanephric blastemia while the ispilateral metanephros regresses. So this classification we have already discussed. 
So the clinical features is all like they can be asymptomatic, symptomatic, and they can also have, have extra renal features. So like asymptomatic, obviously they are usually uh, accidentally detected when they are getting admitted for few other uh, medical illness. And symptomatic is when they present with uh, hydronephrosis, they can present with hydronephrosis, they can present with vesicouretic reflex, or they can present with renal stones or urinary tract infection. So this is an ultrasound where there was absence of kidneys on one side and it's ectopic location in the contralateral lumbar and uh, lumbar region. And the fusion is identified by the presence of inferior and posterior notches in the resultant elongated renal pelvis. And so when you do a IVU, it demonstrates the ectopic location and fusion of the affected uh, kidneys in the contralateral side with the ureters actually crossing with the ureters uh, crossing the midline to insert in the bladder orthotopically. And CT and MR angiogram was also done and it detects the abnormal position of the kidneys and allows earlier identification of the vasculature and details of the, we can uh, get more details of the uh, collecting system. So a little bit about renal malrotation, abnormal position of the kidneys in the renal uh, in relation to the hilum, either it can be unilateral or bilateral, usually related to other anomalies common in males. And because of its association with renal ectopia, the process of ascent and rotation are probably related. So whenever you have a child with renal malrotation, it is always associated with renal ectopia as well. So in conclusion, renal imaging plays a very important role in diagnosis of ectopic kidneys. And any child who's going to have an antenatal anomaly, it means that you need to follow up the child with a basic ultrasound postnatally. And we take up the further investigations based on the postnatal ultrasound. And renal fusion anomalies, though not so common and asymptomatic, it has an immense clinical importance because of their uh, other associated renal anomalies involving the other systems. And so knowledge of the complex imaging anatomy of fusion anomalies and their associated complications actually helps us in planning appropriate therapy and to actually explain parents on long-term prognosis. Thank you.